Will Bitcoin reach $1 million in three months? A crypto billionaire is willing to make a bet on it. Someone even coded this bet in a smart contract on Ethereum. In this video, I will walk you through the Solidity code of this smart contract. And I will explain how you can profit from this. If you are new here, I'm Julian and on Eat The Blocks, I help you to become a Web3 expert so that you can make more money, get more freedom and work on projects that you love. And to get started, we are going to talk of Balaji. Balaji is the famous crypto billionaire that predicted that Bitcoin is going to reach $1 million in three months. He used to be the CTO of Coinbase, so needless to say, he's a heavyweight in the crypto industry. So last week, we had this tweet of someone willing to bet $1 million that the US does not enter hyperinflation. Balaji reacted to this tweet and said that he was willing to bet the exact country so he's willing to bet that Bitcoin is going to exceed $1 million in three months and he's willing to pledge $1 million against one Bitcoin for this. So at the current price of Bitcoin of about $28,000, it's an odds of 40 to 1. And a few days later, a developer on Twitter created a smart contract in Solidity to implement this bet. And I'm going to walk you through the code of this smart contract. So here is the repo of the smart contract. So here we have the interface of ERC20. That's because the two assets that we are going to manipulate are ERC20. So we're going to have USDC and Wrap Bitcoin. Wrap Bitcoin is an ERC20 version of Bitcoin. So that allow you to manipulate Bitcoin, but on the Ethereum blockchain. And the other interface is the price feed of Chainlink. So Chainlink is what we call an Oracle. It allows you to import outside data into the blockchain. And we're going to use Chainlink to get the price of Bitcoin. And after that, we have the smart contract of the bet. And so here we're going to define a couple of variables. So the duration of the bet, 90 days, the price threshold for the price of Bitcoin, $1 million per Bitcoin, then how much USDC Balaji is going to pledge. So here is $1 million times 10 power 6 because USDC has a 6 decimal. And for wrap Bitcoin, this is one Bitcoin and wrap Bitcoin has eight decimals, so it's 10 power eight. And so after that, we're gonna create pointer to the smart contract of USDC and of wrap Bitcoin. And then we're gonna create a pointer to the smart contract of the Chainlink Oracle. And thanks to this, we're gonna get the price of Bitcoin. So after that, we're gonna have the address of Balaji and the address of its counterparty and two Boolean value that tell us if the two collateral were deposited, another one to tell us if the bet was initiated, and finally the timestamp when we start the bet. And so in the constructor, we initialize the address of Balaji and counterparty. Actually, this wasn't necessary. We could have hard coded this directly, line 38 and 39. After that, so we have a function to deposit USDC. So it's Balaji who is going to call this function. So we make sure that here the sender is Balaji and that the money wasn't already deposited. Then we are going to transfer the USDC from the wallet of Balaji to the smart contract. So that means that on Balaji's side, from his wallet, he will need to call the approve function first on the smart contract of USDC. And so after we update the flag for USDC deposited, and if wrap Bitcoin was already deposited, then we can start the bet. So here we update these two variables. And then we have a similar function, but this time to deposit wrap Bitcoin. So this time it's going to be the counterparty that deposit this. And here we transfer wrap Bitcoin from the wallet of the counterparty to the smart contract. And after the logic is the same. And so here, what's interesting is that it doesn't matter who deposit its asset. The first US Balaji with USDC or the counterparty with wrap Bitcoin is going to work in both cases. And so after that, we have another function to cancel the bet before the initialization. So here, either Balaji or the counterparty can cancel this bet. And we can only cancel if the bet wasn't initiated already, because otherwise it would be possible to game the system by removing your collateral after you enter the bet, which means that you can only win but never lose. And so here, if it's Balaji who deposited this USDC first, we are going to update this variable to false and we're going to give back the USDC to Balaji. Otherwise, it means it's the counterparty that is calling this function first. And so we give back the wrap Bitcoin to the counterparty and we are back to square one. 
All right. And so after we have the settle function that needs to be called at the end of the bet. So once the 90 days have passed. And so we are going to require first that the bet was initiated. And second, we're going to require that we are at the end of the bet after the 90 days. And so after we update this flag to false, so that it's not possible to call the settle function twice, but it wouldn't matter anyway, because there would be no asset in it. And here we are going to get the price of Bitcoin in USD by using the chain price function. So here we have this function just below. And so what it does, it, it calls the Oracle of Chainlink and call the latest run data function and it's going to return a couple of variable. So here in Solidity is how you can capture several value from a function call. So we're going to ignore all these value except the price. And after we are going to divide this by 10 power, the decimals of the price feed. So by doing this, we are going to normalize this amount. And after that, we store everything is wrap Bitcoin price. And if the price of Bitcoin is above the threshold that we defined before, so which is $1 million, then the winner is Balaji. Otherwise, the winner is the counterparty. And we are going to transfer all the assets to the winner. So the USDC and the wrap Bitcoin. And so just with a simple smart contract, we were able to implement this bet. So this smart contract is limited because it can only be done between Balaji and a counterparty and it can only be executed once. So an interesting exercise will be to extend this smart contract and allow other people to participate in the bet. And you could even take a cut and keep it for yourself. And so this way you become the bookmaker and instead of betting yourself, you sell shovels. And then you add a front end, you publish it, and voila, it's how you can monetize a very simple idea. And it's really what I love with Web3. You see a simple idea, you can implement it really easily, you can test it, and it's really fun. But if you want to be able to create your Web3 project, you need to have a minimum level of skills. And if you want to get a complete roadmap of all the skills that you need to become a Web3 developer, check out my free masterclass. I will explain you everything. I will see you there.